grass. It's a part of everyone's everyday life, however, it's often taken for granted. So what is grass exactly? Grass. Any of the many low, green, non-woody plants belonging to the grass family, which is the Poaceae, the Sedge family, the Cyperaceae, and the Rush family, the Juncaceae. There are many grass-like members of the flowering members of the other flowering plant families, but only the approximately 10,000 species in the family Poaceae are the true grasses. They are economically the most essential of all flowering plants because of their nutritious grains and soil forming function, and then the most broad distribution and the largest number of individuals. Grasses provide forage for livestock animals, construction materials, shelter for wildlife, furniture, utensils and food for people. Some species are grown as garden ornaments, cultivated as turf for lawns and recreational areas, or used as cover plants for erosion control. Most grasses have round stems that are hollow between the joints, blade-like leaves and extensively branching fibrous root systems. Grass is extremely important to most people's lives whether they know it or not. People have used grasses for a long time. People eat parts of grasses, corn, wheat, barley, oats, rice and millet are cereals. Common grains whose seeds are used for food and to make alcohol such as beer for example and most livestock animals feed primarily on grasses. Grass is also used to make sugar, liquor, bread and plastics among many other things. Grasses have a very simple structure and a very simple way of life. You can get a better idea of what grass needs when you understand how it actually functions in the world. At the base of the grass plant, roots grow down into the earth. Typically grass roots are fibrous or thread-like. They extend into the soil collecting nutrients, soaking up water and securing the plant to the ground. Grass stems called combs grow up from the base of the plant called the crown. The most grass species the culms are hollow and rigid except for the nodes, which are the joints that join the stems together. Narrow leaves extend out from the culms above each node. The leaves alternate in direction. That is, if the first leaf from the culm grows to the right, the second leaf will grow to the left, and the third leaf will grow to the right, and so on and so on. The lower part of the leaf is called the sheath, and the upper part is called the blade. And in most grasses, a ligule surrounds the connection between the sheath and the blade. A ligule can take the form of a thin membrane or a fringe hair-like projections. Like the leaves on a tree, grass leaves serve to collect energy from sunlight through photosynthesis. The photosynthesizing chlorophyll in the leaves gives the grass its nice green colour. There are two major methods of reproduction in grasses. Some grasses have additional stems that grow sideways, either below the ground or just above it. Stems that creep along the ground are called stolons. The stems that grow below the ground are called rhizomes. Grasses use stolons and rhizomes to reach out and establish new grass culms. The stolon and the rhizome nurtures the new plant until it's strong enough to survive on its own. Grasses also have flowers. The small flowers in most grass species are known as florets. Florets grow together in small groups called spikelets which collectively form inflorescences. Flowers produce the spores that pollinate other flowers, which produce seeds. With any luck, some of the seeds will grow new healthy grass plants. In some plants, such as corn, the stem on the flowering part of the plant are obvious, but in long grasses, the long thin leaves overshadow other elements of the plant, unless you're up close, all you see is green stalks. Graminoids include some of the most versatile plant life forms. They became widespread toward the end of the Cretaceous. Fossilized dinosaur dung or coprolites have been found containing grass phytoliths, which is the silica stones inside grass leaves. Grasses have adopted to conditions in lush rainforests, dry deserts, cold mountains and even intertidal habitats, and are now the most widespread plant type in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Mr. Freeze 2244. Good night.